Hello everyone. I have added a new feature to plot math functions using Bezier curve segments in the Bezier Utilities Toolkit. So let's see how we can use that functionality. If you have not tried out the toolkit add-on yet, you might first want to go through the introductory tutorials. The relevant links are in the video description. I have already installed the add-on and enabled it. So I can see the two Flexi tools on the tool shelf the Flexi Draw Bezier and the Flexi Edit Bezier. The math curve plotting is in Flexi Draw Bezier. So I'll activate that tool. I will also hide this key map by pressing Ctrl Shift H. We don't need it right now. And I'll go to the Shape Selection drop down and select Math Function. This will show me a text box where I can type in the equation. By default, the equation is set to sine x but we can of course change it. The same equation is also displayed on the viewport here. And you can change the size and color of the equation text from the add-on preferences. I can immediately start drawing on the viewport. Currently only the 2D functions are supported and the plane chosen to plot the 2D graph is actually the plane whose orientation is nearest to the viewport. So currently we have the YZ plane whose orientation is closest to the viewport orientation. So the function is plotted in this particular plane. If I change the orientation and make it closer to let's say XZ plane, then the function will be plotted in the XZ plane. I'll switch to the top view. So we have X mapped to the global X axis and Y mapped to the global Y. There are two draw modes. Either you can choose to draw from the center or from the bounding box corner. If I select bounding box in the draw mode, then the function will be plotted starting with the position of the mouse at the first click. And if the equation I type in here cannot be evaluated, I get a message in the display saying invalid equation. You can change the amplitude of this wave, of course, by scaling this equation. Let's say I want to increase the amplitude by 3. Then I'll simply multiply this sin x by 3. And if I want to change the frequency, let's say I want to make it 4 times the existing frequency, then I can multiply this by 4. It's also possible to plot a y x plot instead of x y plot. All you need to do is just change this x to y. And now if you move the mouse along the y axis, then the plot is of function of y. And there is one more type of equation that's supported and that's parametric equation. In case of parametric equations, we need to provide two functions. The first one defining x and the second one defining y. These equations contain typically function of a third independent variable t. So let's say I type in the first function as cos t and the second function as sin t. This is the function of a circle. If I now plot the graph, it will be a circle with a radius of one unit. I can change this radius by scaling this. If I change this to let's say three times cos t and the other one as let's say two times sin t, then I'll get an ellipse with the horizontal radius of 3 and the vertical radius of 2 units. In case of the parametric equations, in both the modes, bounding box as well as center, the plotting will start from the center since we are dealing with a third independent variable t, which is neither x nor y. So if we want to change the radius of this circle, every time making the change in this equation is a little bit cumbersome. So there is a more flexible way of doing it. When you have selected the Flexi Draw Bezier tool and the draw shape is of type math function, there will be an additional panel displayed in the Bezier utilities area, which is Flexi Draw Math function. And here again, we can input the functions and there are a set of constants provided here. In all, you can define a maximum of six constants and these constants each have a value and a step. This step is controlled through a hotkey pair. For example, to change the constant A, 
I use the up and down arrow keys to change the value of B. I use left and right arrow keys for constant C page up and page down keys for constant D W and S for constant E A and D and for constant F the left and right brackets. So what I can do now is since this coefficient is actually controlling the horizontal radius I'll change this to the constant B and since this is the vertical radius I'll change this to A. So now after I have started drawing the circle I can control the vertical radius by pressing up or down arrow keys. You can see the constant A value is getting changed by the step increment that we defined. Similarly I can change the horizontal radius by pressing left and right arrow keys. Again you can see that the constant B value is getting changed every time I press left or right arrow key. So this way you can see the impact of various coefficients in the equation on the nature of shape being plotted. There are a couple of other parameters that basically allow us to control the independent variable t. For example, with this map t drop down, if I choose x, then the t value will vary when I move the mouse pointer along the x axis. If I set the map t to y, then the t value can be controlled by moving the mouse pointer along the y axis. And I can even set it x, y so that the value of t changes with movement both along x as well as y axis. The t scale factor determines how quickly t changes when we move the mouse pointer. So let's say if I change this t scale factor to 20, then with very small change in the mouse pointer position, there is a large change in t. As against that, if I change this to small value, the variation in t will be very slow. The t start value is the offset value for the curve starting position. Similarly, I can change the curve resolution using the mouse wheel or plus or minus buttons on the numpad. Once you have defined all these parameters, you can save this particular math function giving it a name. So I will call it, let's say ellipse and provide a description and if I now click save this function is saved and it will appear in this drop down and if I change these values and later on I want to reset them then I can use the reset button to reset the constants to their last saved values. Then there is this import button that allows you to import any math function provided it's saved through this add-on so if you look at the math functions, they are stored in the form of an XML file with all these values. So if you want, you can directly edit this XML and you can share it with others or you can store and import it. So with this import button, I can choose a particular math function and say import. So it will be imported here. I have already imported a set of equations. All these equations I have uploaded on GitHub and the link is in the video description. So you can try them out. For example, this particular math function creates a peanut shape and you can change the constant values to have different kind of effects. Or there is this Archimedean spiral which will create a spiral shape with again a set of variable configurable parameters. You can play around with these functions. And lastly, I would like to mention that since this math plotting functionality is part of the Bezier toolkit, the snapping framework is available to it. So I can use any of these orientations or origins for creating the plot. I'll just demonstrate this. Let's select the orientation as selected object face and the origin also as selected object face. Let's set the constraining plane to XY and let's also check this snap to plane option. Now I'll add an ecosphere and reduce the subdivision count to 1. 
now we will be able to draw on individual faces of this ecosphere just to see clearly on which face we are drawing we can enable this option display orientation slash origin axis so now we can see the axis on the face on which the plot will be drawn and we can quickly convert this curve to a mesh by using the convert curve to mesh tool let's set the fill type to nothing so that we will just have edges we can let the resolution value be zero since we have only straight line segments and if i now say convert this curve is converted to mesh and we can extrude the edges and if required add the modifiers that's it for now if you have any questions or suggestions please leave a comment on this video thank you for your time